hey guys welcome back so in this lesson we're going to be talking about global error handling so i'm starting off in the controller for the countries and we had mentioned earlier that we would want to reduce the need to repeat this try catch every time we're about to do an operation while it is very essential it becomes repetitive over time because we have four functions where we keep on writing try catch try catch try catch and for every other function it would be important to put it in so what we want to do is implement a global way to handle exceptions and reduce the need for the repetitive try catch statements so what we want to do is standardize what happens when we catch an error because when we catch an error, we, we actually do the same thing. The only thing that's sort of dynamic would be the, the part where we say the location, which to me is actually kind of optional. I probably don't necessarily have to do this part. But the point is that the message is relatively the same and we always give that 500 response code. So what we want to do is to have like a standard way to represent an error. So in models, I'm just going to create a new class and I'm going to call it error. And then in error, we're going to have three fields. So we're going to have status code, we're going to have message, and then we're going to have a third one where we're providing uh, the message as a serialized JSON object. So for this one, we'll have Newton JSON, Newton soft, sorry, dot JSON. So that is how our error class will look. Now, after that, what I want to do is extend our startup pipeline, but I'm going to use the service extensions like what we've been doing for the past few times. And I'm going to have a new fun and we're calling this new function configure exception handler. And this time is getting the middleware pipeline. So originally we'd be getting the services. This time we're getting the application builder. All right. So in this, we go ahead and we say app dot use exception handler all right so the the dot net core application in and of itself has its own exception handler so we're just kind of doing like an override to say this is really how we want you to operate so use exception handler and then we need our little token or lambda looking token and then in here we open and close curly braces semicolon at the end so inside of this block, I'm going to say error.run. So this is me adding the custom middleware code now. And I'm going to say async and my token expression, which I'm going to call context. And then my lambda arrow once again for another object. All right. So what I do is every time I am going to do one of these, I just make sure to put the semicolon on the end of the on the brace or the parenthesis rather, so I don't forget it later on. Right. So then we're going to say set some some constant. I'm setting context dot response dot status code to be equal to status codes dot. 500 so the same 500 that we return every time there is an error we're just setting that as a constant so we don't have to type it over and over right so where was i sorry so status codes dot status 500 internal server error and then i'm setting the content type to be application dot json then i'm going to say var context feature is equal to context.features get i exception handler feature you may need to import a data a missing data type for this one so you can go ahead and do that so what we're going to say now is if the context feature is not equal to null then we want to say log dot and then log an error so remember that every time something fails we actually do that we have our logger and then we log an error or we pass in whatever is wrong right so i'm going to say something went wrong i'll just copy this paste it over here something went wrong but instead of name off and get countries this time i'm going to say context feature dot error so that will kind of give us an indication as to what went wrong right so log.error context feature dot error 
And then we go on to say await context. So you see, just, just to bring us back to your synchronous programming, notice that this little arrow here is green and it's saying that we're, we're saying async, but we haven't awaited anything. So when I say await, that arrow is now satisfied and it goes away, or sorry, the async keyword is now satisfied. The line goes away. So I'm going to say await context dot response. So we're going to say send back a response to the calling context. So context here really represents the controller that is passing down the information. All right, we'll see how that works in a few. So write async, all right? And then we want to say we want a new error. So new error, and I'll just go ahead and initialize this model. There we go. So we want a new error where our status code is going to be equal to the status code that we just set up here. So I mean, we could have easily set that here. It's fine. But we want that. And we also want our message to be equal to something consistent. So I think here we just said internal server error, please try again. I think that that's what we said every single time. So we'll just let the message be equal to that very consistent message. And then all of this we want to convert to string. Then we have a semicolon. All right. So let's just review this a little bit. So we're saying that we want to override our default exception handler. And the way that we want the exception handling to occur is such that when one happens, we write the log and then we generate an error model with the status code and the message. All right. So that would kind of eliminate our need to manually do that every single time. Now, after writing that custom middleware code, what we need to do is go over to the startup and I'm going to put that one right underneath the swagger. So we're going to say app.configure exception handler and that should be it. So what I'm going to do as a proof of concept is remove the try because try really means do this. So without the try, it's going to attempt to do it. The only, the real purpose or the, the game changing aspect of the try catch is that it will say try this operation and handle the errors that occur. So if I have global error handling, then I don't need to go ahead and put in anything to handle it manually when something does occur. So I'm going to try, um, well, I did that in the get country by ID. All right, that's fine. So we're going to run some tests with this as a proof of concept. And what I will also do is, okay, we'll just, we'll just look at how it works. So I'm going to start and I'm going to run a request for API slash country slash one. And then we're getting country number one, which is Jamaica with the hotel. So everything is working fine. That's what we would expect. All right. Now it's hard for me to, you know, introduce an error otherwise. So what I'll do is introduce it manually here in the code. What I'll do is throw a new exception because the catch is there to catch an exception. So if I throw an exception myself, then what would happen is that the code would actually stop executing at this point and never get down there. Now I want to see what response I would get when that exception is thrown. So we're going to go ahead and run that same postman request that was just successful. Now we introduce the throw exception. And when we do that, we see that we're getting back status code and message. And those two fields are the same two fields that we just defined in our error model. All right, so what is happening here is that the exception handler is actually globally watching for any time an exception is caught, then it is doing what we asked it to do, which is to log the error and say something went wrong here. So let's see what's in the log. And when I check the log, I'm seeing my exception right here. So system exception, system dot exception was thrown. I could have made it more specific to say exception, this, that, that. But then if you look down, you'll see 
the whole pipeline as to where it went. So what happens is that it went to the controller, the controller threw an exception, and then the exception handle that, handler that we overrode hit our custom code, and then it said, okay, what should I do? Well, the status code is 500. The response type is JSON. I'm going to log the error, and then I'm going to write back in a response that this has occurred. So that way we can actually safely and confidently, having done that, remove all of the other try catches from anywhere else in the code. Because once again, those try catches were there to make sure that we're handling all the errors gracefully or as gracefully as possible. So now that we've made it global, you what you can do is just do as you see me doing and just go through and take out all the try catches and whatever code it is that you expect to be executed you just go ahead and execute that. And what you realize is that because of that, the removal of that dependency on the try catches everywhere in every action, when you are expanding and extending on your API's functionality, your code will look much cleaner because then you and your team can just write the code knowing full well that your exception handling is happening at a global scale. So I've done that with country. You can go ahead and clean up the hotel controller as well as any other controller that you may have.